Free. Free. Rob cut. Rob cut. Rob cut the door. Free. Good. Go for a walk. Free. Free. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm now calling this True Geordie Extra because it's it's just more of me. Hopefully you like that. And this is where most of my fight content is going to live. So subscribe, especially if you like fight content. Another one powered by Gymshark. Shout out to the lads and lasses at Gymshark. Always looking after me. And they can look after you. The link for them is in the description if you want to buy yourself some gym gear. Now, Conor McGregor seems to have healed up. His legs actually not looking too bad, judging by his um, pictures. And he's finally talked about the fight and how he's seen it now obviously the reason I'm interested is I want to know where his head's at after a beating is he thinking of this logically and is he saying it for how it was or is he is he kidding himself and and that is the worry here I, I just want to know what he thought of it interestingly he's uploaded a highlight which only seems to be of all of his good bits. Wow, when you edit it like this, it looks like you really beat the fuck out of Dustin, to be fair, doesn't it? It looks fantastic. As a Conor McGregor fan, can we just end the fight here and act like nothing else happened, yeah? Just, oh, he caught that leg, punched him, finished him. Conor McGregor on the fight, could believe, in the rematch. It's going to be fantastic. I don't know who put this together. I feel like I did, because it's like what we what I wanted to happen and not, not reality, is it, Conor? Some highlights from my last fight. Well, your highlights, specifically. What a trilogy I I now have on my hands. Exciting. I mean, he seems quite upbeat there. With a handle on the leg kicks, I will get back to having fun in there. It was as if Connor had never had a leg kick before in his life. I don't understand how a man as experienced as him can just not react to leg kicks. Like, you know, that's your job, pal. To act like they're something brand new when they're clearly not. I know the calf kick especially is a new variant on something that's been done plenty of times before, but you'd think someone of Connor's level would know the defense for that attack it, it is a bit bizarre at the level he's on let's take this point by point I'm in second gear cruising in this fight he did look like he was in second gear but a lot of that I feel like is because he didn't realise the threat of Dustin and he was allowing Dustin to grow into the fight and he took his time with him and he paid the price to brag about that I'm I'm not so sure that's you know if you'd, if you'd not been in second gear maybe you'd have won the fight mate the best condition I've ever been in yeah he did look in amazing shape on the way in but during the fight I'm not sure he was as springy on his toes or as explosive as I've seen him in the past. He says that after the wrestling and clinch, my shots still held their pop. I mean, yeah, you were still lighting Dustin up at times, but you didn't drop him. And I think that that wrestling and clinch work did just enough to take the edge off. He then bangs on about <laughs> plant-based recovery spray that he's used, which, I mean, yeah, whatever. I am extremely happy, though, that I did not need to use the stool between rounds anyway. Yeah, but... Is, is that because you are fitter or is that because your leg was so fucked up that you couldn't sit down or risk not being able to get back up again? Like I, a lot of people seeing that looking back at it is a, is a clear indicator of just how bad the leg was compromised by that point. And actually a bit of a giveaway to Team Poirier of he's so fucked up here. You, this, is a, this is something McGregor's never ever done before. I know we're here to try and find the positives and build the case for the rematch, but also reality. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I'm I'm not, I'm not buying that, to be honest with you. But, you know, we'll give him it. Another first for me. I am most certainly on the right path. Despite the loss, I'm on the correct path of evolution. M McGregor knows more about fighting than I'll ever know, right? Far be it from me to tell a man like that he's talking shit. But he might be. Just see how it's out, right? When you're smoking people, including Dustin Poirier, and then six years later, you get finished by that fighter, it's usually not a sign of evolution, is it? You know what I mean? Three out of his last six fights, he's been finished. And this one was a bad one. The man across the road from him, Dustin Poirier, the one who has been regularly fighting, has been evolving, probably isn't as naturally gifted as Conor McGregor, but has got the all-round game and came at Conor with a takedown early on with the leg kicks to compromise the leg and then finally brought in the boxing a complete MMA game whereas Connor sitting there focusing on the boxing is that evolution? because you, you, you look like you're regressing actually and that that is the, tr the, the truth of it isn't it? Thoughts on the bout I enjoyed racking up some more time. If 
40 seconds in three years is all I'd had up to this bout. I mean, part of that is his fault. Let's be honest here. A lot of that is the difficulty it was to get McGregor inside of a cage after the Mayweather money. However, I will give him that for the last year, he's been begging the UFC to get in that cage and even fucking him and Dana falling out over it and the UFC pushing him back or no, we'll get you back when the crowds are back. They fucked up the money. The last thing you do with the money bag of the UFC is keep them out of the octagon as much as possible and then put them in against one of the hardest fighters you can find. What were they thinking? Like in retrospect, looking back at it now, tune-up fights are being used by Tyson Fury, by many great fighters. Ty AJ isn't fighting the fucking best every single time he steps in there. You know, you build up to that. It was madness from the UFC. And now they've got themselves in a position where the Khabib fight that they were dreaming of is not happening because they threw him in with a lion, first off, when he could have been eased back into that level of competition. It was it was mental. A little single discipline in my approach and stance with mostly boxing. Just a little, Connor. I mean, it was the most predictable you've ever been in there by a mile. But I'm relieved that he's acknowledged that. It's what I get for picking this bout and his opponent as a precursor to a boxing match against Pacquiao, which has now gone up in smoke, by the way. So this must hurt twice as much because not only have you lost against the guy who you thought you were way better than and then, then not gotten the Khabib fight, you're also not getting the Manny Pacquiao fight, which would have been for a boxing title and would have been for a fuck ton of money. So this fight wasn't just a fuck up. It was a monumental fuck up, which has cost Connor possibly in the region of a hundred million pounds. I, I feel good for him. It's not even my money. I deserve to get the legs kicked off of me for going in with this thinking. I rate that. That, that, that is the type of thing you want to be hearing from a man who is going to go in there again. You want to be hearing acknowledgements of reality and that he is going to work on fixing them. This is not the game to play around with. Besides this though, my shots were sharp and I was in full control. Albeit the leg kicks were building up on me throughout the course. 18 in total thrown at me with the final one bu buckling my leg. And that was that. The perennial nerve had been compromised. I do love the words that Connor uses when he recaps a fight. Like, Nate Diaz beat the living daylights out of him in that first fight. And he's like, I was inefficient with my energy. Yeah, he was inefficient with my energy. I get that. That is kind of true. But it's like, he's like, the leg was compromised. No, he kicked the hell out of your leg. He beat the fuck out of you afterwards. Like, he's analytical. He sees things unemotionally. He, he views it through a magnifying glass. And hopefully, with that, he may come back better than ever. I am still on the fence about what we're going to get from him in future, but it does seem like he's taking account of what went wrong there. First time to experience it. A tremendous finishing flurry by my opponent. Hats off. Well fought by the diamond. Won a piece now with a fight for all the marbles. So he's campaigning for the trilogy. He wants the trilogy fight. Not the one I was expecting, nor the tactical fear I was anticipating, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't meant to be. This is exactly how it was always meant to be. Yep, he, Dustin went out and put the work in and while he was doing that, Connor was piss farting around in pubs and all the rest of it that he was doing and the man who was maybe not as naturally talented went and outworked him and when the time came, he was fucking ready. Dustin's confirmed on social media he wants to fight and with Connor and Dustin being so clearly the biggest names of that division now, outside of Nate Diaz who, who knows what the fuck he's going to do, they're going to probably make this fight and it's going to tell us so much much about Conor McGregor. This is, without doubt, the most important fight of Conor McGregor's career because in the past, the jeopardy wasn't as high. With Diaz, he, he went and did the rematch and in the Diaz one fight, you've seen he was the better fighter, but he gassed out and he, the, the ability to come back and win was there and he did. And he proved in that second fight, in my opinion, who the better fighter was. Even losing to Khabib, Khabib is such a, a legend and such clearly a great, great fighter of all time. Losing to him, didn't affect his legacy that much. But when you start losing the other fighters who aren't considered a level of Khabib, it calls your legacy into question to a lot of the mainstream fans. And then they start looking into, well, how good was he? I mean, was it just at 145 he was that lethal? Because when you look at other weight classes, he clearly didn't have the same run. And this is R McGregor now fully fighting as a rich man. And when you look at what other fighters have been able to do, like Floyd Mayweather, is it going to be a case of when people look back at him, they go, he was good until he got rich and then we'd never seen the same guy. This could be ring rust. I'm, I'm open-minded but there were some signs in this fight that there was more than just that. We've been over some of this in previous videos but the aggression 
pre-fight, the swagger walking into the cage, the urgency in the cage to get rid of Dustin. None of that was there. The, the, the typical ferocity that we associate with McGregor and a fight wasn't there and the niceness before the fight I'm like Ugh. like don't get me wrong I, I appreciate the respect between the two but I do think he's given up one of his tools which is the psychological warfare that he used to put on his opponents which clearly had an impact and you could see Dustin backstage pre-weighing having to talk to himself clearly not feeling that that confident he could have made that a lot worse for him and he didn't feel like he had to he treat Cerrone like no nah, I'm just going to be nice to you because I know I'm going to knock you out anyway I and he did the same with Dustin. And I think he could have really impacted Dustin's state of mind more and given himself a big advantage. And he chose not to because he didn't feel like he needed it. And now in the fight, not putting it on Dustin as quick as he could have, not being as aggressive, Dustin was able to grow in confidence. It was a recipe for disaster that he allowed to happen. And now when he fights Dustin again, Dustin is going to be more confident than ever. I know I can beat you. He's created a monster, but even worse than Dustin already was. And then there's also the way Connor acted after to the fight like he's always a gentleman when he loses I'll give him that for sure there's also a little throwaway comment he made after the fight about oh it doesn't actually hurt me that bad this one and maybe I've got to think about that you know when you're a fighter a pro fighter and you lose that should burn you into your soul a bit you know what I mean you've got to really be pissed about that and I remember you could see that after the Nate Diaz loss you could really see he was gutted but now now he's a whiskey guy now he's a fashion guy now he's a guy with all these businesses and a, and a yacht so i don't know is it still burning is it is it going to burn him dustin poirier has basically admitted he's going to take this fight for the money because realistically you beat connor the title shot is there anyway and there's some people suggesting this should not be for a title shot i know justin gaethje has said if this is done for a title shot i'm not fighting in the ufc anymore because connor lost if anyone was going to fight for a title it should be dustin poirier the guy has basically beaten everyone outside of khabib and he's the unofficial champion right now so he gets to do what he wants if you were going to go from a purist standpoint you'd say charlie olives uh, charles oliviera whatever the fuck he's called uh, versus dustin poirier because they've both been on fantastic runs however if i'm not mistaken dustin's the former interim champ connor is the former lightweight champ outside of khabib they're the most decorated guys and yeah connor lost but connor beat Poirier before you know yes he's been out of action but I don't know I feel like if they were to do it for a title then so fucking what what who cares do you know what I mean but maybe that's because you know I'm a Connor guy or whatever ultimately Dustin's doing the right thing taking the Connor fight now because if you don't fight Connor now and he goes and fights Nate Diaz for example say he loses and then Connor retires that money's gone and gone forever you have to get these fights while you can because who gives a fuck about a title you're out there for the money you're a prize fighter so I think Dustin's doing the right thing if he takes this fight. And also, if you have a trilogy win over Conor McGregor, I mean, you are the man. He was already the man, but like that is legendary shit. I just want to say, Conor, if he does do this fight, look a bit more like his old self. He, win, lose, or draw, whatever. Come in there, be confident. Be aggressive. Obviously, watch those fucking leg kicks. But look a bit more like the Eddie Alvarez fight. You know, all of this up here like this, that is not, that ain't MMA. He had his hands right low. He was able to be ready for whatever was coming his way. And he was fluid. He was, ironically, he looked a little stiffer. I see stiffness at that 155. <laughs> It's, it's a Connor line, but he, he did. And I also wonder about these strength and conditioning guys. He may have been overtrained, if anything, for that fight. He looked a little, but he looked smaller than Dustin. That is for sure. And he, he, he didn't look as energetic as I've seen him in that first round. But maybe this is all a mental thing. It's, it's tough to tell. We're going to find out so much in that next fight. One thing we do know for now is that he's acknowledged some of the mistakes he's made and he's putting a brave face on to try not to lose the mental battle before the preparation for the third fight happens and the funny thing for me as a McGregor fan is the main takeaway I've had from all of this is I'm so happy for Dustin Poirier because the guy is such a good bloke like he is such a nice dude hard as fucking nails and this is the type of fighter who the UFC is built on the back of the ones who fight three times a year 
constantly consistent hard as nails and usually they don't really end up getting the titles or the big money paydays that they deserve the rewards and he's going to get that now and it's fucking earned and for me as, as a fight fan I've actually grown so I don't know how to put this I'm frustrated by how many fighters they are who barely fight more than once a year like I used to have a lot of favorite fighters back in the day now if you're not fighting at least twice a year three times a year I, I'm not you're not one of my I can't get behind you you're too stagnant for me to actually invest in in your career if you're not bothered about your own career why the fuck should i be you know what i mean and don't don't get me wrong some guys out there get injured cody garbrandt and the like quality fighters who i love to watch but if you're barely fighting i'm like like right now that heavyweight division has been so shit for so long because we can barely get a heavyweight title fight more than once a year it's a fucking joke but anyway i've, I've gone off on a run there so you get my point people like Israel Adesanya wins a title stays active moves up a division whatever's going to happen there we don't know I, I love the fact that the guy didn't just rest on his laurels when he won a title he is at it that's what we want to see more of so if there's MMA fighters out there wondering how you become a big star that's how you do it where the fuck is Jorge Masvidal they finally made him into a big star and then took him away in the box forget about like the UFC I don't know what they're, they're, they're thinking sometimes because they, they create these big stars and then, all right, I get that they want more money to fight or whatever, and that takes a bit of negotiate. But motherfucker, put them on a card. I'm ready. I'm bored. It's lockdown. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So that was my recap of McGregor's statement post-fight. Hope you enjoyed the video. We've got much more content coming out for fighting on this channel. So subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you later.